Good afternoon. This is a lecture for filariasis. There are three filarial species that cause lymphatic filariasis in humans. The most common of which is Wuchereria bancrofti. Bruga malayi and Bruga timori are the most common cause in Asia. This is the worldwide distribution of filariasis. You could see that including Philippines and India, it is marked red wherein the disease is considered an endemic disease. Infection spreads from person to person through mosquito bites. The adult worm lives in the human lymph vessels, mates, and produces millions of microscopic worms also known as microfilariae. Microfilariae circulate in the person's blood and infects the mosquito when it bites a person who is infected. The microfilariae grow and develop in the mosquito. This is the pathophysiology of lymphatic filariasis. Immune response system which is cell-mediated and humoral are sometimes not working. So this would cause lymphatic deletion and cause mechanical damage to the lymphatics. This would then elicit severe inflammation and calcify necrosing, necrotizing granulomas and would eventually lead to lymphatic obstruction. When the mosquito bites another person, the larval worms pass from the mosquito into the human skin. They travel to lymph vessels. They grow into adult worms, a process that takes six months or even more, and an adult worm could live in the host for about five to seven years. When these worms mate and release millions of microfilariae in the blood, People with microfilariae can serve as a source of infection to others. So many mosquito bites over several months to years are needed to get lymphatic filariasis. People living for a long time in tropical or subtropical areas where the disease is common are at the greatest risk for infection. Short-term tourists have a very low risk. So in Africa, Anopheles is the vector. Americas, it's the Culex. Pacifics and Asia, it's the Aedes and Mansonia. The disease is indicated by swelling and decreased function of the lymph system, which weakens the immune system. These people would have more bacterial infections in the skin and lymph system causing hardening and thickening of the skin which is called elephantiasis. Many of these bacterial infections can be prevented with appropriate skin hygiene as well as skin and wound care. Men can develop hydrocyl or swelling of the scrotum due to infection with one of the parasites that causes lymphatic filariasis, particularly Wuchereria bancrofti. To diagnose active infection, we identify microfilariae in a blood smear by microscopic examination or microfilariae causing lymphatic filariasis that circulate in the blood at time. So we could use serologic techniques. So this is an alternative to detection of microfilariae. And patients with active filarial infection typically have elevated levels of antifilarial IgG in the blood. And these can be detected using routine assays. Filariasis demonstrate nocturnal periodicity. 
So, blood collection should be done at night to, coinc to coincide with the appearance of the microfilariae. Thick smears are made and stained with gymsa or hematoxylin and eosin to show the filariae. For increased sensitivity, concentration techniques can be used. Because lymphedema develops many years after infection, lab tests are most likely to be negative with these patients. So this is the life cycle of the Wuchereria bancrofti, which we would have started uh, studying in microbiology and parasitology. So your mosquito takes a blood meal from an infected host, and then would present adults in lymphatics. Then these are sheeted microfilariae that migrate into the lymph and blood channels. Then it takes a blood meal and ingests microfilariae again. So they again shed sheets, penetrates mosquitoes midgut, and migrate to the thoracic muscles. So the larvae migrate to the head and the mosquitoes proboscis and takes a blood meal, therefore, again, infecting another person. So, this is the life cycle of your microfilariae. So, how do we prevent uncontrolled? Best way to prevent lymphatic filariasis is to avoid mosquito bites because these are the ones carrying microscopic worms that usually bite between the hours of dusk and dawn. If you live in an endemic area, at night, if possible, sleep in an air-conditioned room or sleep under a mosquito net. Between dusk and dawn, wear long sleeves and trousers and use mo mosquito repellent on exposed skin. Best way to prevent lymphatic filariasis is to avoid mosquito bites. Another approach to prevention is to give entire communities medicine that kills the microscopic worms and controlling mosquitoes. Annual mass treatment reduces the level of microfilariae in the blood and diminishing transmission of infection. This would be your basis of the global program to eliminate lymphatic filariasis. Philippine experts consider that filariasis is a neglected tropical disease which can be eliminated globally and a global campaign to eliminate filariasis as a public health problem is under. Strategies would include annual treatment of whole communities with drugs that kill the microfilariae. As a result, generous contributions of these drugs by the companies that make them, hundreds of millions of people are being treated each year. Since these drugs also reduce levels of infection with intestinal worms, Benefits of treatment extend beyond lymphatic filariasis. Successful campaigns to eliminate lymphatic filariasis have taken place in China and other countries. So thank you for this short lecture for filariasis. Um, please await for other lectures in our YouTube channel, PMCH JFSM. Thank you.